we're on today with Jay Bell. Not only is he a board member with C Media, thank you for joining by the way, uh, you know him from a, a whole slew of media uh, he did down in Los Angeles, and you know him locally as the man behind yourbonusyears.com, uh, reimagining retirement or retirement reimagined, depending on which side of the brochure we're looking at. Jay Bell, welcome to the show, man. How Thank you. you. Yeah. So you've had a really interesting background. You started as a reporter in Stars and Stripes. That was your first Yeah, going media. way back, yeah. That, yeah. Uh, I had studied journalism at USC, and yeah. then uh, in the Army, uh, they say never volunteer for anything, but I volunteered for enough stuff that I got positioned in Tokyo uh, during the Korean wind down yeah. of the Korean War. Wait, wait, and, so uh, USC, were you born in Los Angeles? Did you no, I came out of Chicago. And, uh, okay, so <laughs> all the way back to Chicago, then LA. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, the, um, the evolution there was uh, uh, being a stringer, and then finally on staff kind of positions, and a feature mm -hmm. writer at the Stars and Stripes in, uh, in Tokyo. Wow. I had come out of working on another publication that went out to the Army Security Agency that went to all the posts in the Far East. So, uh, yeah, I was hip deep in the media world and uh, uh, came out and had a nice job. You've, you're familiar enough with LA, yeah. KNX, CBS. Uh, affiliate, yeah. Affiliate, owned by, yeah. And you're a news writer there. Were you on air as well? News writer, yeah. 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 And uh, f a feature writer for a guy named Ralph Story who yeah. came in with an interesting little you know, human interest kind of stories and stuff like that. And I was hustling all over LA and digging up those things. And yeah. So that was a nice gig. I, I, I ran imagine. out of uh, school to be uh, boom, boom at, at the well, national why, level. Why did you choose USC? Why, why, were, why didn't you stay in Chicago? In, in, I'm sorry? Why didn't you stay in Chicago? Uh, well, I... I mean, that's another... I went to visit capital. my parents. My parents, I was at Northwestern. I was going to go to the journalism school at Northwestern. Had right. all that figured out. And... Um, they had moved to Santa Monica, and I went out to see them, and I liked Santa Monica. So I yeah. started playing volleyball down there, and, uh, and I was meeting uh, Peter Lawford and uh, people like this. I was playing ball with, and I thought, hey, this, I think, I, so I, I didn't get to SC right away. I went through Santa Monica College and on into of course. SC, but I became an L.A. guy. Of course, yeah. <laughs> no, it's a good, good way to be, having done it myself. My <laughs> parents also moved away from me. <laughs> it's like a trend. I think, well, it's... Yeah. How long did you stay in Chicago after your parents moved? How long did I... Yeah. Well, I, I like to say I still go... <laughs> I've been going back. I like love Chicago, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, well, like 18 years. I was 18. Yeah. Just, uh, Were your parents media people at all as well, or...? Um, well, my dad was uh, a photographer. Mm -hmm. And uh, at a point, he, he loved L.A. so much, he got back and forth. At one time, he had this, he was working on the Paramount lot yeah. there uh, in the stills department. Oh, that's great. And uh, so, albums full of Charlie Chaplin and people. <laughs> he, he was, so in the, he was that much in the media thing. Yeah. And he took me on tours and so forth. So I was always kind of enticed and interested. But the journalism thing was more, you know, I was going to be another Walter Cogart. That's right. And, uh, but I never did get on the air. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, went from there to KTTV, if you know that one. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, independent. And a guy named George Putnam was the, uh, <laughs> the news anchor. <laughs> and he had that big, deep voice. And, and uh, one of my favorite lines out of him, we were all, you know, I was writing stuff for him. But uh, he had the big American flag back there, an American flag here, and <laughs> leaned forward to the camera. What we're getting out of Vietnam <laughs> is very distressing. It's, it's very well known now that our troops are very heavily in use of marijuana. Oh, God. <laughs> he couldn't allow himself to say it. <laughs> he had the Orange County conservative right. <laughs> thing locked up. Well, how did you go from L.A. Uh, up to up here? Because I, I, as I recall, you worked with, uh, uh, well, you're in the PR department at one point with an energy company. Yeah, I, I went... Uh, in L.A. I was working uh, on the news, but I uh, got lured into uh, maybe making a little more money in the yeah. uh, PR world. The dark arts, as we say. Yeah. yeah. And uh, among the assignments, Southern California Edison was right at that time in the 70s, building that um, San Onofre uh, nuclear right. plant, which was a little controversial. Is <laughs> yeah. so that the one on the coast uh, yeah, down yeah, from yeah, Marine yeah, Del Rey? Yeah. 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 And uh, so they had some explaining to do. And I went to, uh, uh, they hired me to do 
to bring in some of my pals from the media world uh, to put their executives on the on. Yeah, see, this, this is how it works. You've come yeah, full yeah, circle. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we uh, drilled the executives and uh, got them <laughs> out of saying all the wrong stuff <laughs> and made them into spin doctors <laughs> yeah. about the nuclear energy. But that was uh, going on, and then I got called in one day. Jay, can you come down the hall? Uh, something maybe be interesting. So I went into a meeting, and there was a gerontologist and some PhD psychologists from SC, the School right. of Medicine. They had been for about six months studying executives uh, as they retire, right. and they went. They clearly came up with a name for what was going on. These executives were getting out into that world that sounded nice, you know, retirement, retirement yeah. and you go to the desert and sunshine and Bill Webb had the, you know, the perfect golden year life right. there for you. <laughs> and, uh, but they didn't kind of catch on to that. They, they were miserable. They, they, they had lost their identity. They had lost their, their uh, value. You see, <laughs> yeah. their entire self-perception was based on their jobs. Yeah. And yeah. so when they're out of that, yeah. yeah. And that was in, in the 70s, Ben, for the most part, well, all of them yeah. were uh, men, but, uh, the, um, yeah, it was kind of sad. They'd be retiring and uh, they'd kind of walk into the lunchroom and, and try and have a conversation with some of the old colleagues. And they'd go, hey, Bob, it was really nice to see you. We, we got to go back to work. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this lonesome soul goes out to the parking lot Jeez, and goes oh home man. to his wife, who could care less about him, right. being home. You know. In fact, we had a saying, uh, I married you for better or for worse, but not for lunch. <laughs> go find something to do. <laughs> So the dilemma was serious, and, and these professionals uh, gave it a name, you know, something like the syndrome from right. the troops coming home from Afghanistan. Like PTSD, these people were yeah. called, and they named it uh, post-retirement uh, depression syndrome. Wow. And it's, it still exists. It's, it's a very much a, men are more, more vulnerable to it for some, for, for they, they're more identifying, yeah. they, they don't want to admit that either that they're in depression. So when we come back, we'll talk about one of the fixes you were charged with creating uh, that helped these guys out. And we're talking to Jay Bell. We'll be right back. And we're back with Jay Bell. He's one of our esteemed board members here at C Media, and also has had a really great background in media. Uh, and we just left off where you were helping uh, some colleagues with. What was uh, what you were calling retirement uh, depression syndrome, mm -hmm. post retirement depression yeah. syndrome, um, which is ironic because I know for a fact that you were nowhere near retirement yourself when you were asked to manage this. Let, let's kind of pick up where we left off. Yeah, there. I, was, I was young. You know, this was all a very, you know, academic idea yeah, right. <laughs> to me. I, retirement. I, well, I, how, how long were you? That. But. Um, how old was I? Yeah, uh, in my thirties, I guess. <laughs> late thirties. What do you know about retirement? Yeah, <laughs> sounds interesting. <laughs> that was nice for Grandpa. <laughs> but the um, the uh, thing we, we did, they developed a program for a year before people were these executives were to retire, not knowing they were going to be depressed about it. Right, right. <laughs> Imagine that they would be though. Kind of a conditioning. Have meetings up. They had to go mandatory meetings once a month, or yeah, to preceding their preceding their retirement, retirement yeah. uh, for twelve months. So it was my job to, you know, it's kind of fun. Uh, let's learn to sail. Let's learn a new <laughs> language. Hey, how about going back to school? You know, a lot of nice footage I could go out and get, and it was fun right. doing it. And um, and um, so you know, it's inspiring them to to look somewhere other than sitting home doing. Uh, crossword puzzles, watching TV, and yeah. trying to figure out whether you're going to go to Costco today and the post office or... <laughs> right. And dying, as it and turns then, out. Well, and being in that level of depression about it all, dying. Yeah. Uh, depression really set in. Yeah. The mortality and rate was they would die within a year often. Yeah. It was, it yeah. was more than... It was like 60% in the first... It's crazy. 18 months of their retirement. Yeah. Of course, yeah, smoking and stuff, they did, they did all okay, great care of themselves, right, right. but um, uh, it was clear that the retirement transition, transition's a big issue. You know, yeah. the, the more I've gotten into this, the more I see that with, uh, and finally now women are uh, candidates for what I have to talk about too, and they're, uh, other than being spouse, uh, mm -hmm. worrying about the 
old man coming home and yeah, well, yeah, yeah. The world has changed such that they also have retirement. Yeah, issues, now they're so. retiring, right. and uh, yeah. Yeah, couples are trying to figure out how they. The school teacher goes this way, and the engineer goes that way, or whatever right. it might be, and uh, that's a, it's a job too. So, 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 in your thirties, you're introduced to this concept of of a post retirement life and how to how to arrange that. What brought you to? I mean. That's a lot of time before you actually retired, right? So, what, yeah. so, so did you start this this enterprise while you're be, prior well, to your retirement? Not the enterprise, no. I just okay. I did my job. They told me to do this thing. Yeah. And then in the '80s, I, it started getting in my head about uh, as a serious issue, and I did see some family members and all that getting into it. And then this movie came out. You might recall about Schmidt. About Schmidt, directed by Alexander Payne, starring Jack Nicholson. Yeah, it's about Schmidt. Uh, it was a film about Jack Nicholson looking at the clock and thinking he was an executive in Omaha, an insurance uh, executive, and uh, he clearly loved his job, very well dressed. And he, he was up in the higher end of the building, and uh, uh, he wasn't so sure his clock was ticking to <laughs> have him retire. So he uh, did, and he was home. And the next scenes were him trying to do a jumble and crossword puzzle and figuring things out. But he couldn't get his head straight on how he could. What does this mean to not have a job? I'm not, you know, my authority, my my existence is uh, being eroded. Yeah. And uh, one scene I just loved. He he's looking at his wife in the middle of the night, looking over her, sleeping on her pillow. Who is this woman <laughs> living in my house for 42 years? And that Jack Nichols said, I don't even know her. <laughs> and that was kind of indicative. And I, I, I was sitting there in the audience, I, that kind of reminded me of the, uh, the situation those executives back 10 yeah, years yeah, earlier were yeah. involved with. And I planted that seed. So it, it, it rolled along. And uh, um, so when I got to be, I'm 82 now, so well done, yeah. I, I, I've become a role model, you know, and I was trying, since I've been 60, for the last 20 years, doing everything I could do to avoid <laughs> that syndrome. Well, let me see, did you re retire at 65, or? I, no. Okay. <laughs> I never, you know, I'm at the media center, we're helping, uh, I okay. get, I, I, involvement in, in work was more than I was, Gonna, I was going to give that up. Yeah. Okay, so let me rephrase that because obviously it's a semantic thing. You didn't retire. When you transitioned from daily employment to uh, pursuing these right. other ventures, yeah. uh, how old were you? Well, I guess in 50s, 60s. Uh, I had evolved into doing, I'd gone into, came up to San Francisco yeah. and I um, uh, got more involved in the greater world of TV commercials and yeah. These multimedia shows they do at the uh, uh, Clorox's sales meeting and all those. Were you working with an ad agency or uh, a couple of different ones? Yeah. Oh yeah. What I were you doing? All kinds of cards about her. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was great. And uh, were you a copywriter or? Uh, I at points was a copywriter, speechwriter, uh, co uh, uh, scriptwriter, and uh, but I got more into actually directing and producing and. And then independently got out with a couple of other people and started up a production company. So you're, you're basically a madman. You were, you were like Don Draper. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I shudder when I see that show. It's <laughs> oh, really? way too real. <laughs> way too Is it real. Really? I mean, I've had moments. <laughs> well, first of all, my lungs were getting tired watching him right. smoke. I, yeah. I do remember those days. Everybody had the ashtray. Yeah. And um, yeah. But everything about that was kind of interesting. The women coming into the executive roles and uh, like, who said they could come into our lunchroom? You, know, that, that you saw a really interesting point of transition for- Yeah, in the 60s, yeah. 70s, yeah. Uh, into the 80s. Yeah. And during the 70s, the Mad Men time, that was quite, quite something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm both proud and embarrassed about it. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so is that how you got to Sonoma County? You went from San Francisco and working in the ad game to, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, a lot of travel and stuff, uh, specializing in food. That was kind of there a security go. thing. I, uh, high tech was not, you know, I was- Not your thing. <laughs> anybody over 35, you know. I walked in the Oracle building once to do a little PowerPoint show or something for somebody. And I think I was the oldest human being that ever walked in that <laughs> 
complex <laughs> <laughs> in Oracle. I was probably 42 <laughs> right. at the time. Yeah, here you but, um, uh, so, but food was good, yeah. Yeah, here we are. Sun-made raisins. <laughs> We're with Jay Bell. He's on the board of directors for C Media, and we're uh, having a chat about the days of advertising, and then we'll be back in a moment to talk about what we do when we retire, or not retire, as the case may be. <laughs> be right back. We're back with Jay Bell. He's one of the board of directors with C Media, and uh, one of the few actually with a huge media background. So it's, it's <laughs> nice to have you have you aboard. Uh, so we left off talking about uh, how your career has taken so many different aspects, and 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 uh, in this this particular one you're in now at 82, which is amazing to me. Uh, you you are working with people, helping them transition from one mode of uh, employment to another. Um, you know, in yeah. your sort of yeah. or not, you know. Um, the name of my the program I go out and give yeah. talks and, and uh, workshops. Uh, we call it reimagining retirement, and basically that's one way of looking at that is eliminating the word retirement. Yeah, because you know, I noticed you bristled a bit when I said it the first time. Well, this baby boomer thing, uh, they're 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 that mongoose and the snake thing going through right. the population. You know, they're, they're, whatever they have wanted, they've gotten all through the, the years and. Um, yeah, because those damn kids to you, right? You're, you're, you're older than them. Yeah. <laughs> so I was, I was this wiser, older guy <laughs> that they shoveled out the door. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm going through it right now with millennials. Trust me, I, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but uh, uh, which is an irksome kind of thing to me. That uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a volunteer on a couple of other things at the Council on Aging, and uh, in this community in Sonoma County, there's so much positive things that uh, go on with uh, supporting the, the aging right. elders in their society. Uh, but we're sitting on a, an age bomb that's about to happen with the baby boom. I oh, mean, exactly. there's so yeah. many of them, yeah. such a huge generation. And the millennials are coming along, 80 some million of them. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the baby boomer thing, every week I think it is, Whatever it is, it boils down to every eight seconds, <laughs> right. a baby boomer would, goes over 65. So they're all flowing in that thing. Well, but I thought the, it was yeah. eight, every eight seconds, a baby boomer plays the Grateful Dead. A baby That's, okay. boomer turns okay. 65. <laughs> yeah. okay. But, um, you know, there's a lot of issues about all that. But, uh, you know, Social Security, is there going to be enough there? Right. there all these kinds of... Uh, and they're a generation that hasn't had much respect for their elders, and in other societies, elders oh, were they, venerated yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. What are they going to do? They don't have anyone to look up to except you. You're the one guy, one guy looking out for them. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, that's been an interesting aspect to what I've been doing. I, I, I went into it thinking, maybe I have something to say to these folks. You know, so I've given talks at Oakmont yeah. to retirees, and of course, they're, they're also happy about themselves. and. <laughs> Yeah, I got like a hundred different programs for learning computers and ukuleles and yeah. <laughs> dancing and and, uh, <laughs> and uh, but you know they they another aspect of Sonoma County is the volunteer. Yeah, I think I saw I know I did saw a statistic that thirty eight point some percent, almost forty percent of Sonoma County's residents adults. Mm -hmm are engaged in some kind of volunteer work. Or at least they put that on the form they filled out, but yeah. Yeah, so, no, I, no, I'd say you're right. I, yeah. it's, a, it's a pretty, we have a pretty wonderful mm -hmm. situation yeah. here where people do want to contribute. So it's to really that. interesting to see the yeah. Oakmont people that are comfortable in, uh, in their retirement well, with a golf course you. out there going into, they, they will work, they, they deliver meals for Wheels on meal, meals on wheels. Yeah. For the well, yeah. Agent. So, what what if you don't have any money to retire? There's a lot of baby boomers who just, you know. Have yeah. Well, that's that that may be an increasingly uh, serious issue. The baby boomers are not great at saving money uh, either. The statistics are pretty... Pretty dismal. So they're, pretty, yeah. so they're just saying, well, I, I'm, I'm just going to have to keep working. And they, 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 they do one way or another. There, there's been an interesting approach to, mm -hmm. and, and a complete change. You said they didn't respect their elders. Yeah, we just threw out the old ideas of, uh, yeah. of their folks who had a three-part uh, life. Right. Education, work and family, and uh, leisure. Right. And this lasted about 
six years after their retirement, <laughs> you know, at best. <laughs> right. But now, um, what's going on is kind of a reinvention of all that kind of thing. I was amazed. I think it stands loud and clear about the, the mentality of the baby boomers. My wife and I were up in Port Townsend, Washington, mm -hmm. uh, just a, a tourists, yeah. and wandering around. We saw a storefront with a very nice looking store, a bit like in Sebastopol, the crafts and, and, uh, and you could tell kind of new age way of thi right. thinking and looking. But the uh, uh, banner in the window, said, reinventing myself, tune, stay tuned. <laughs> and, the, and the store was for rent. You know, uh. you know, an Indian craft, or, you know, uh, yeah. Native American uh, crafts and things that they were selling. So. Now obviously she, it turned out, uh, Typical baby boomer, you know. Right. I'm going to do what I, what I, what I want to do from here, and that's uh, that was refreshing. It got me interested in, in doing more of this kind of reach outreach. What to I was going to ask you, so so, do you do it for you, or do you do it for them? Well, that's kind of an interesting, you know, in, in my own in the in the transition work, mm -hmm. putting people through a little exercise in uh, what are you going to do when you grow up, you know, you're 65 and you're looking out there now at that retirement. A uh, big question is, you know, wh who are you and what, what, what really, what was that thing that you thought about when you were six that you were going to be doing or back somewhere in there. Uh, and uh, so we kind of probe into the, to the inner, inner side of it and see, well, if you could have an opportunity to work or you know, what if you could do something that was really more from here than, than just earning money? And um, uh, get some good answers out of that. But yeah. I, in doing it, I got my own answers. You know, I'm at the media. So I, I'll, I'll look for anything to get me back into what I love doing back yeah. in, the, uh, in my work. Which was doing media and stuff like that. You know, we're, so, we're very happy to have you, for sure. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's only just begun. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> true. Yeah. <laughs> but the... Uh, that's kind of it. I, I, you know, I sort of had a talk with myself about it and uh, realized, yeah, if I'm going to put something up there in the hierarchy of my ambition, it's not to play golf yeah. or you know, uh, watch TV. It's to produce TV. <laughs> it's to be in the, in the thick of it. So that, yeah. now, now I'm spreading that word, that a guy can be 20 years past the so-called retirement age and uh, be just happy as can be. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Jay Bell on the board of C Media uh, with a great media background, and uh, we're privileged to have you on the show and on the board. We'll, well talk to you again soon, right? Hey, great. Yeah, see you in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs>